Good morning, everyone. I consider myself privileged to be able to present our work at the Department of General Surgery at Sage GS Medical College and KM Hospital India on a platform provided by SAGES. Now, peritoneal dialysis is a life-sustaining renal replacement therapy for patients with end-stage renal disease. However, its potential is still underestimated and unexploited in India. I'm Dr. Jayati Churiwala, and I'm here to deliberate upon our experience of laparoscopic peritoneal dialysis catheter insertion at a tertiary care center in India. I have no conflicts of interest to disclose. To give you a brief background of the dialysis situation in India, as per an informative bro brochure released by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare of the Government of India, approximately 2.2 lakh new end-stage renal disease patients are added to India every year, thus increasing the load of dialysis sessions by almost 3.4 crores. Most of these patients belong to the age group of 30 to 60, and a lot of these patients never reach a nephrologist. Therefore, providing appropriate, adequate, and timely healthcare becomes a social, medical, and administrative challenge. For every 100,000 patients on hemodialysis in India, only 6,500 patients are on peritoneal dialysis. Despite the advantages that peritoneal dialysis provides of freedom of movement and home-based therapy to patients, the fear of complications like pericatheter leaks, catheter dysfunction, and peritonitis have limited its widespread use in India. However, are these fears completely rational? We analyzed a cohort of 48 patients who were referred to us by our in-house nephrologists for laparoscopic peritoneal dialysis catheter insertion. 11 of these patients had undergone a previous catheter insertion and removal at centers outside for reasons of peritonitis and catheter dysfunction. Two of our patients had a previous incisional hernia. So we went ahead with a laparoscopic PD catheter insertion under general anesthesia under low-pressure pneumoperitone. A sub-umbilical 10 mm port was inserted by the open method for telescope entry, and the working ports were inserted as shown. A diagnostic laparoscopy was performed, and the PD catheter was inserted from a pre-operatively marked exit site. The following best practice guidelines were followed intraoperatively. In the presence of dense pelvic adhesions, an adhesiolysis was performed. In patients in whom the omentum reached the pelvis, a prophylactic omentectomy was performed to prevent omental wrapping of the catheter. In patients who had undergone a previous PD catheter insertion and removal for reasons of displacement, the PD catheter was fixed to the anterior abdominal wall, the sigmoid colon, or to the ovary in females. The two-cuffed straight catheter was inserted by tunneling it through the rectus sheath. And intraoperatively, we checked the inflow and outflow patency of the catheter. Now, this musculofacial tunnel that is created through the rectus sheath allows the maintenance of a pelvic orientation of the catheter. It avoids kinking of the catheter. It avoids the need for fixation of the catheter at the exit site, and also, and also reduces the chances of a future hernia through the site. The mean duration of surgery ranged from 20 to 35 minutes. Two of the patients who had incisional hernia underwent an incisional hernia repair with only mesh plasty. Three patients were started on an urgent start dialysis, one of whom developed a pericatheter leak, which was managed conservatively by absorbent dressings. The remaining 45 patients underwent peritoneal dialysis after two weeks and in the interim were maintained on hemodialysis. None of our patients on a six-month follow-up developed bleeding, peritonitis, or surgical site occurrences. Now, there are several modes of PD catheter insertion that have been described, but the advantages of the laparoscopic approach include the possibility of insertion of the catheter under vision. It allows adhesiolysis to prevent compartmentalization. It allows a prophylactic omentopexy or an omentectomy to prevent wrapping of the catheter by the omentum. It allows catheter fixation. And it also reduce, uh, it, it also allows the diagnosis and simultaneous repair of any previously undiagnosed abdominal pathologies or hernias. 
concerns associated with this procedure include the requirement of general anesthesia and a longer learning curve for surgeons associated with operating under low pressures. Our results have been comparable with uh, results reported in case series across the world. I therefore implore this audience and the medical fraternity to offer the benefit of home-based renal replacement therapy in the form of peritoneal dialysis to patients and request policymakers to reduce the out-of-pocket expenditures associated with peritoneal dialysis to increase its widespread use in India. Thank you. <laughs>